Hey guys, so today we'll be talking about alternations of generations. So before we begin, we need to talk about a couple of processes involved in cell division. So the first one being meiosis. Meiosis is the cell division that results in, daughters, in four daughter cells that have half the number of chromosomes of the parent cell. So if a parent cell has 46 chromosomes and undergoes meiosis, it will produce four daughter cells with how many chromosomes? That's right, 23 chromosomes each. The next process we need to talk about is mitosis. Mitosis is cell division that results in four identical daughter cells that have the same number of chromosomes of the parent cell. So for example, if we have a parent cell with 46 chromosomes and it undergoes mitosis, it will produce four daughter cells with how many chromosomes? That's right, 46 chromosomes each. So another example is if we have a parent cell with 23 chromosomes and it undergoes mitosis, it will produce four daughter cells with how many chromosomes each? That's right, 23 chromosomes each. So the next process we have to talk about is fertilization. Fertilization is the combination of uh, the male gamete with the female gamete to form a zygote. So how we can think of that is if a sperm that is a haploid cell fuses with an egg that is also a haploid cell, the resulting embryo will be a diploid. Or we can think about that n plus n equals 2n. It's important to remember that meiosis cuts the ploidy in half and mitosis keeps the ploidy the same. So in other words, meiosis takes a diploid cell and turns it into four haploid cells, while mitosis takes a diploid cell and turns it into four diploid cells, or takes a haploid cell and turns it into four haploid cells. This is important when we look at alternations of generations. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can label the following cells as either haploid or diploid. Once you've had the opportunity to label the following cells as either haploid or diploid, be sure to check your answers with the board. Next, let's go over the different components involved in alternations of generations. First, the gametophyte is the haploid adult that houses gametangia or the plant's sex organs. Archegonium is the female gametangia, which is located on the gametophyte, that produces the egg. Antheridium is the male gametangia, also located on the gametophyte, that produces sperm cells. Sporophyte is the diploid adult that houses the sporangium. Sporangium is the enclosure that produces spores. And a spore, well, a spore is a haploid cell that is formed by the sporangium and germinates into the gametophyte. Now that we've identified the different components involved in alternations of generations, let's put it all together. Remember that mitosis maintains a cell's ploidy while meiosis cuts a cell's ploidy in half. First, let's start with the gametophyte, which remember is haploid or an adult. The gametophyte has gametangia in the form of archegonium or antheridium that produce gametes in the form of egg or sperm. The archegonium can produce eggs, while the antheridium can produce sperm. Well, let's remember that the gametangia and the gametes that they produce are both haploid. So, what cellular division must have occurred for this to happen? If you thought mitosis, you're correct, since if you remember from the previous section, mitosis maintains a cell ploidy. Next, the joining of the egg and the sperm, or fertilization, forms the embryo that has a ploidy of 2n. The embryo develops into the 2n sporophyte, that houses the sporangium, or the enclosure that produces spores. So what cellular division must have occurred for the 2N embryo to develop into the 2N sporophyte? If you thought mitosis, you're correct, since again, if you remember from the previous section, mitosis maintains a cell's ploidy. Now finally, the sporangium has a ploidy of 2N and produces spores that have a ploidy of N. So for this to happen, what cellular division must have occurred for this to happen? If we look back, meiosis cuts the ploidy in half, so we can conclude that the 2N sporangium undergoes meiosis to produce the N spore. Now finally, the haploid spore germinates or undergoes cell division by mitosis into the gametophyte, and the cycle starts over again.
the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.